Hi, everyone. This is Neil Caden, and welcome to a presentation of CAS uh, Aperio software. Um, I am with the Aperio Foundation, and I'm going to give a brief uh, uh, description of Aperio and then hand the discussion over. So, Aperio Foundation is a uh, Together with partner organizations, represents a network of over 180 institutions and commercial affiliates worldwide. Um, you can learn about our various projects and communities at our website, aperio.org. Um, Aperio's mission is to support community collaboration for the creation and sustainability of open source software to support the academic mission. Uh, a number of our projects are being actively developed and maintained. Um, some are, and, and many are in production at hundreds and possibly even thousands of institutions around the world. Um, now I will hand the discussion over, and I'm probably probably going to mispresent pronounce your name, so I apologize in advance. It's uh, Jérôme Leleu. Is that close? Jérôme Leleu. Close. Been close, but not quite there. <laughs> so uh, I'll hand it over to you, Jérôme, and um, please feel free to, uh, to proceed. Okay, thank you for the introduction, Neil. So I'm Jerome Leleu, and uh, I will present you CAS in this webinar. The presentation will last uh, 40, 45 minutes, and then we'll, uh, we'll, you will be able to ask questions if you have some. So just a, a few words about me. I'm uh, fairly involved in the CAS open source project. That's why I'm presenting it uh, right now. I'm currently the chairman of the project. Uh, to, be, to, to, to make a summary of my experience, I'm globally a, a technical leader. And I, I, it's been like something like six years that I'm working on the CAS, CAS project. I'm also the creator of Pack4G. Uh, which is a library to, um, uh, to, to support multiple protocol on the client side. And PAC4G is integrated in the CAS uh, server projects. That's why I'm mentioning it. So what are we going to talk about? First, we'll go through uh, the general concepts of CAS to get uh, a global understanding of CAS, how it works. Then we'll focus on the CAS server, its features, its setup, and uh, the various integration capabilities we have. Finally, I'll talk about the CAS clients. So CAS general points. CAS stands for Central Authentication Service. It's mainly, if you want a very simple definition, a web SSO. SSO, it's a single sign-on. It means that you can log in into multiple web applications only once. It's a very useful system as we have more and more web applications uh, in, uh, in global systems. The way it works is uh, greatly inspired by Keberos for people who know uh, how it works with tickets. It's it's closed in, in, in the CAS uh, server. It was hosted by uh, JSIC, but as uh, Neil explained, it's now in the Aperio Foundation. It's a, a fairly, let's say, old project because it started in uh, the year 2001. It was created at Yale, and the current version is a version four, and it started at version one. So it's a, an old project which has uh, add a lot of evolutions and improvements over time. It's an open source project. Uh, that's a great advantage. I won't enter into the details. There are seven committers associated with the project. Not all are active uh, currently. It depends. There are up and downs in every uh, people experience and careers, but. Uh, this is enough to, to maintain uh, a solid, uh, a solid, uh, um, and, and to maintain enough people uh, to, to, to make the project go further and uh, get new evolutions and uh, bug fixes. There are two mailing lists. 
uh, one for users, one for developers. So it's the, generally it's a, a good way to ask questions for any problem with CAS and the CAS project as well. Uh, it means the server as well as the uh, CAS clients are hosted on github.com, which is now the reference. Uh, I, I mentioned also Unicon, which is a, a consulting uh, company. I'm not here to make some advertising, but they are well known in the in this area of uh, of, of consultancy. So let's get into the the key components of CAS. CAS is composed of a, a server, one server in Java. In, it's written in Java, it's the technology. And the server has two primary roles. Uh, it validates the credentials of the users. Uh, if you provide your, pass your login and your password, it's the server which is responsible for uh, checking uh, this credential. And the server also creates the SSO session. The SSO session, it's uh, the session during which the CAS server will recognize the user and will be able to authenticate him across all the application. So uh, it's written CAS TGC. It's the name of a cookie, in fact, which had the, the SSO session of a CAS server. There, are, uh, there is another name uh, not mentioned on this slide, but there is another name, which is a TGT, a ticket granting ticket. A ticket granting ticket is the SSO session of the users of a user and the TGT is saved into the CAS TGC cookie. And for each application, because the SSO session is across all the application the user can access, and for each application the user wants to access, there is ST, which is a service ticket, which is an authorization to access to the application. So we have one CAS server, uh, which is uh, central component and we have clients all the applications which want to, to be linked and work with a CAS uh, mechanism needs to be uh, integrated with a CAS server and for that they need to uh, embed some CAS client so there are many CAS clients in many technologies and we, we say that uh, a web application uh, is CASified when there is a CAS client integrated in it to be able to communicate with the CAS server and handle uh, the SSO mechanism. And for the communication between the clients and the server, there is a public protocol, which is an, uh, at, at the time uh, at version three. So with these components, we have the core flow to implement the SSO mechanism. The SSO mechanism is to log, to log in just for the first application. And then when we try to access another application, which requires to log in, uh, we, we won't need to enter our credentials again. So there is the browser on, on the left uh, uh, top corner. There is a website on the right with a CAS client. It's a small policeman. And there is a CAS server on the bottom. The first step is when a user tries to access a protected URL of your website. Let's say it's step one slash app slash protected. If this URL is protected, the CAS client, whatever technologies and the way it will be implemented globally, uh, generally it's the way it works, the CAS client will intercept the, the HTTP request, the call, and we'll re redirect back to the CAS server. It's step 2A and step 2B, and the call is to the, the URL, your, your host slash CAS slash login with the parameter service equals slash app, uh, which is uh, the URL of your application. The call to the CAS server must be in HTTPS. It's the way uh, the, the security will be uh, we be uh, we will set up. If you don't use HTTPS, you won't be able to uh, to offer the right level of security. HTTPS is mandatory uh, to work with a CAS server. 
and the slash app uh, URL, which is the service parameter, um, is the URL which defines your application. And this URL must be defined inside the CAS server so that the CAS server is, is aware of all the application which can log in users with him, with it. So the CAS server doesn't see any cookie, no, no CAS TGC cookie, no SSO session. So the CAS server replies to the browser with a login page uh, to, to request the users to, 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 to fill in their credentials. It's step three. Step four, the user uh, can fill in its credentials and, the, and uh, post them to the CAS server. Everything happened in HTTPS per security reason as I already said, uh, it's step four. And step five, if the authentication is successful, it means if the login password uh, uh, are validated by the CAS server, the CAS server will reply with a CAS TGC cookie, which is the TGT, the ticket granting ticket, which is the SSO session, and a ticket, a ticket parameter is the service ticket, which is a one access, one time access to the application. It's, it's step 5A and 5B. So we go back to the CAS client and the CAS client, whatever its technology, is able and uh, to receive a service ticket and validate it uh, against the CAS server. It's step 6 and step 7. The CAS server says, yes, it's really a good service ticket. It's a valid one. Uh, you, the user which uses this service ticket is, and you see, it's the uh, the icon with the, the green the, the green user. In fact, so that's the way it works. We have a, a, a SSO session which lasts um, maybe thirty or one hour, thirty minutes or one hour or several hours, and we have a which can and the cast TGC cookie will be reused several times and we have a service ticket we see just one access you can use it only once just one access to an application uh, and it lasts a small amount of time something like 10 seconds for example what is really interesting is the second flow if you try to access uh, another website in fact what will happen step one and step Two will happen. Of course, you're trying to access a new website, and this website, the CAS clients in this website, doesn't have any security context, so it will redirect the user back to the CAS server. But this time, as the CAS server uh, can retrieve its own uh, CAS TGC cookie, it will be able uh, to uh, generate a new service ticket for this new application. And no login page uh, will be presented to the user to enter its credential. So no login page the second time, the CAS, the CAS TGC uh, uh, tells the CAS server that the user is already authenticated. So that's the way it will work and that's the way it will provide uh, the SSO mechanism. So that was the, the, the very simple scenario, the login, the login flow. We can have uh, advanced scenarios with a CAS server. We have three of them, which are listed on the slide. Uh, the first one is the renew, par it's a renew parameter. It's a parameter which uh, will force the authentication. What does it mean? It means that even if you are already authenticated, even if the SSO would uh, would allow you to uh, access an application without without entering your credential, even without even if the SSO mechanism is enabled, the renew parameter will force the login page to be displayed and the user's credential to be entered. So renew force the authentication. On the other, uh, on other side of a, of a spectrum, we have a gateway parameter, which uh, this time is meant to test the authentication. That is, every time you try to access 
an, an application if uh, protected URL or area of your application, if you are not authenticated, the CAS server will display a login page to, to, to request the user to authenticate. If we use the gateway parameter in the URL, uh, the CAS server won't display any login page and will return directly to the application without any service ticket. It's a way to test if the user is already authenticated. If the user is already authenticated, a service ticket will be uh, will be sent by the CAS server because the user is already authenticated. If the user is not authenticated, no service ticket will be uh, sent to the application and no login page will be displayed. These two features are advanced concept and not always necessary, but that can be helpful in some use cases. And we have the most powerful feature of the CAS, uh, CAS protocol and server clients. It's the CAS proxification. We have a very uh, simple diagram on the, on, the, on the bottom of the slide to explain that uh, how it works. And there is a, a, a slide just after, but I won't enter into the details. We will just focus on what is CAS proxification. Proxification is like for network. Proxification deals with user identity. If you are authenticated in your application, and if your application wants to access uh, a web service, the CAS protocol allows you to proxify your identity from the website to the web service. I think it's one of the, one, maybe the only one, the only protocol which allows you to do that user identity proxification. So how it works? At the, at the time when we validate the service ticket, when the application validates the service ticket received from the CAS server, the, the, the website can uh, add an additional URL on which it will receive uh, additional information to finally, I won't enter into, into the detail, but it is, it is a bit complicated, to finally get uh, a PGT, it's like a TGT, but it's not a cookie, it's time, this time it's a parameter, it's a token, it's an opaque string, which will present a DSS session. And thanks to this PGT, the website will be able to request a proxy ticket, a PT, a proxy ticket, which is a ticket, it's, which is a one access ticket for a web service. This time not granted from a, a, a SSO session held in the, in the CAS TGC cookie, but directly from a PGT parameter. And this way, the website will be able to call the web service providing this proxy ticket and the mechanic and the same uh, service slash uh, proxy ticket validation will happen, and this time the user identity will will be respond from the CAS server to the web service uh, with also the proxies. It means the website use during all the communication process. It's it's not it's not a problem if uh, the CAS proxification is not completely clear, but you know you can proxify the user identity through uh, web applications to another application. In, on, on this slide, we have the detailed uh, uh, request exchange between the CAS server, the websites, and the web service. But I won't enter into the detail. You, you have it, and there are some documentation also uh, uh, from from a CAS community uh, to, to get a, a better understanding of this proxy flow. So I, I talked about uh, validation service ticket and proxy ticket validation. Uh, in fact, there is no not only one way to validate your service ticket or your proxy ticket received by your CAS server. There are several URLs in the CAS server for this validation. Uh, and these URLs have been created uh, along the evolution of a CAS protocol. Slash validate, which returns only the username as a plain text. 
uh, was the CAS protocol version one. Then service validate slash service validate and slash proxy validate URLs have been created with CAS protocol version two when the proxy mechanism has been created and you can and you get username and you and proxies. So be, because the concept of proxy is, is linked to the CAS protocol version two. There is also the slash SAML validate URL to re receive in the application username and attributes in the SAML format. And since the new CAS server version four, uh, which is linked to the CAS protocol version three, we, we can now have username and attributes of the users and proxy in the XML format. So I'm done with the general concept of CAS. Uh, we can now uh, dive into the details of a CAS server itself. The main concept of a CAS server is, of course, authentication. Authentication, well, it means to validate credentials and uh, the SSO create SSO sessions and access token creation. So, which what we call tickets. So, authentication and tickets will be the two main. Uh, um, will two main um, information and uh, uh, concepts available in the CAS server. So for authentication, we have the authentication handler. It's the method you can use to authenticate and validate the credential provided by the users. We can authenticate users against uh, LDAP using the LDAPtive library uh, against database, Radius, X, uh, 509 certificates, Nenego, JAS, or we can delegate the authentication to another identity provider. And you must understand that it must be, it can be Twitter, Facebook, or other uh, identity provider with other protocol. But I, I won't enter into the detail right now about that. I will talk about that uh, when I, uh, when uh, I, I discuss the integration of a CAS server with other protocols or you can create your own authentication handler. Okay, that's, that's one of the main concepts of a CAS server, authentication handler. And on the other side, as we need to, to save somewhere, uh, the TGT, uh, the service ticket, all this ticket, all this information, uh, we need to, stop, to store them in some ticket storage. And for that, we can, we can do that in memory, in database, in JBoss cache, EHCache, memcached, and th these are the uh, official implementation. There are others. Uh, I personally created one with Redis, but I know there are with Couchbase, with Azelcast. Uh, lately, has been uh, uh, more popular. So it's the way to to store your, the tickets. The CAS flows will use during uh, during all the interactions with the user and browsers. Logout. Logout seems to be a very easy, uh, easy question because you you just logged in. Now you can log out. That's pretty simple. It seems to be pretty simple, but in fact, it's not. Logout is a pretty complicated issue. In fact, we are talking about SLO single logout because if you log into your CAS server, you have also accessed to many web application. So it means that if you want to uh, log out from a CAS server, you also generally want to log out from these applications. And here is a problem because uh, the CAS server is a, a decentralized mechanism. You will go through your CAS server only once at the beginning to get the service ticket and then uh, the application will live on its own. But the CAS server will need to notify uh, that the application must log out the user when the logout when, when the user has requested a, a, a logout from a CAS server. So there is one URL. It's the slash CAS slash logout on your CAS server. It's pretty simple for the CAS server, which destroyed the CAS cookie and some other information stored in the tick storage. But the CAS server will also call the the applications the user accessed 
to notify them that the, this uh, session for this user uh, must be destroyed. For that, it will provide the, the service ticket used at the first access in the application. We have two mechanisms, back channel communication. What does it mean? It means that the CAT server can contact directly. It's a direct communication from server to server uh, between the CAT server and the application. And the CAT server sends uh, uh, a SAML. Uh, it's a it's a logout request. It's in some SAML format with a service ticket. Service ticket, as you can see at the bottom of uh, the slide, it's the logout request. It works pretty well in many situations, but there are some use cases when it doesn't work. If you have several nodes for your applications, and if you have session affinity, generally this will happen through a cookie, a specific cookie, to save which node on which node you are. And this cookie is only known from your browser. So if a CAS server tries to communicate with uh, the right node directly from a CAS server, it didn't, it, do, it doesn't have this information. So if you have two nodes, you can try to contact, uh, to communicate with node one to perform the logout, whereas the user has been authenticated and has browsed the, uh, the node two of the application. So for, to deal with that, we need some uh, front channel communication. It means that a logout request uh, must go through the browser to retrieve all the cookie uh, link uh, uh, associated uh, to uh, to any session affinity uh, setting. It actually it's uh, some exp exp experimental feature in CAS, so the front channel will still evolve in the further in the future implementation of a CAS server. There are other features in the CAS server. There is a REST API, which is some API of, with which you can log in a user, get a service ticket, or log out a user. It's pretty useful if you have some uh, application on a desktop or on a, on a mobile, which is not a website, but a real uh, application. There is a Remember Me feature as well. Uh, remember me, it's um, the concept of a weak authentication. If you provide your login and password and stay uh, in the same browsing session, it's a strong authentication. We are pretty sure it's still you in front of your computer uh, because the SSO session will end when you close the, your browser. The remember me doesn't work that way. The when, when you use a remember me with a cache server, in fact, the cache TGC cookie will not last only a few minutes, a few hours. It will last several days and won't be terminated when the browser is closed. It will have an expiration, an expiration date. So the remember me will still be uh, enabled and active when you open, when you reopen your browser. So in that case, we are less sure about the fact you are the right person in front of your computer. So we are talking about weak authentication when it's a remember me. But it's a pretty useful feature. You can see that in many uh, business websites right now. The web remembers you. Even if you have closed your browser, uh, if you come a few weeks later, the web server remembers you. That's a feature available in the CAS server. We have some audit capabilities and monitoring also. And there is CAS add-ons, which is an open source project uh, developed by Unicorn, which provides uh, several useful features also. But I won't enter into the details right now. The login page. OK, we didn't put all our money in the design, to be honest. but it's good to see it at least once. It's the login page we'll use to uh, authenticate on your CAS server. It's the default login page, and generally, CAS deployers are uh, using their own uh, customi UI customizations.
let's dive into the technical uh, details of a CAS server. The technical components of a CAS server, how does it work? There is one web application. Currently, it's version 4.0.1. And there is optional libraries, depending on what you want to do. If you want to uh, do some LDAP authentication, there, there is an optional library for LDAP authentication. And you will create your CAS server, your own CAS server, using this default, this core web application. And with optional libraries, you will select for your needs. And everything is mainly based on Spring, Spring Core, Spring Security, MVC. We, we also use Spring Webflow to uh, define the way the CAS server behaves, uh, uh, depending on the various scenarios, log in, log out, the, the different options we have. And there is a specific file uh, called login slash webflow.xml uh, to, to define these behaviors. I already said it, authentication is a primary uh, goal of the CAS server doc. So many, many classes, Java classes in the CAS server are linked to the authentication. Uh, Multi-factor authentication, in fact, MFA, on, or what we call also level of assurance, LOA. Uh, in the CAS server, you can uh, use many credentials uh, internally, and you can have a policy to uh, authentication policy depending on the uh, results of the authentication on these credentials. Currently, if you take a look at the CAS server, we, you will just see the login page with a login and a password. It's one credential, but we, you, you could customize your CAS server to get one more credential, like some SMS or like some uh, token code received by email things like that, and the CAS server is able to deal with that. The core interface in the CAS server is the authentication, as we can see there is a principal, a date, attributes of authentication, and there is a list of, that's, that's the very important point, there is a list of credentials, a list of successes, and a list of failures. It says if we have many credentials, how many credentials have been successfully authenticated? and Based on that, we can have a policy to define what should be the behavior of a CAS server. So the classes are listed. I won't enter into uh, the details of these classes, but internally, the CAS server can support multi-factor authentication. You just need to customize the UI. So how to set up your CAS server? It's Java, so the best way to do that for a web application is to use the Maven over a mechanism. So you create your own CAS server and providing in a pom.xml file that you are based on the uh, CAS server web app, which is a CAS server web application, uh, war. And then you add all the optional uh, libraries required. And then you can also configure it and override the right uh, spring context to define uh, the timeout settings, the tickets, storage definition, all the authentication handlers, uh, and the configuration properties. And finally, you get your own CAS server, which is a war, also a Java uh, web application. Uh, in this example, it's my CAS server with the uh, optional libraries CAS server integration EHCache, CAS server support LDAP, CAS server support auth, all based on the CAS server web app uh, application, default application, and the CAS server core default library. And then you can customize and create your own CAS server. That's the way, the really the good way to do uh, you, the, your own, own CAS server customization. No UI is available to do that. You need to programmatically uh, define uh, and in the spring context configuration, uh, uh, customize your own CAS server.
the cast server is a great software, but generally in many universities or companies, there are uh, already various uh, system, SSO system and mechanism using other protocols. So I've made some Google Trends battle between OpenID, SAML and us. And as you can see, SAML is stable. OpenID is dying, EOS is uh, in great evolution, is, is uh, in, in a good way uh, regarding other protocol. So we need to uh, to communicate with all the other protocol. The CAS server needs to be able to support them uh, in different uh, mode. So we have OS, SAML, and OpenID. We have two ways to support a uh, new protocol. Uh, the, the first way is that the CAS server can behave exactly like uh, an auth server or like a SAML server, like an OpenID server. That's the server support. For auth, uh, it's uh, uh, the, the, the main grant type, which is the authorization code of auth2 is implemented. For OpenID, we have a global support of the OpenID protocol. For SAML, it's better to to use some bridge between Shibboleth and the CAS server. So that, that's that's for the server support. For the client support, it's based on the Pack4G libraries, as I already talked about. It's uh, uh, the way to delegate the authentication from the CAS server to another identity provider. How we how we that happen. In fact, on your login page, you can have a link, and this link is authenticate on Facebook. And instead of entering your credential in the login and password fields, you click on the authenticate on Facebook, you are redirected to Facebook, and then you can enter your Facebook credentials, and then you are redirected back to the CAS server. And you are successfully authenticated in the CAS server. That's the client support. It works for us, SAML, and open ID. Just some security consideration, and maybe I should go faster because it's late. Uh, it's open source code, so it's pretty simple to take a look at the code to customize it, but it's pretty simple to review it to check if all the uh, implementations are uh, correct. Security consideration, of course, HTTPS is required. Security is based on that. Only use the modules you need. That's some uh, basic rules, basic basic security rules. But it's a good way to uh, to avoid any issue. And only define the services you need. Uh, only define the URLs of your application, which will really authenticate on your CAS server. Don't use wildcards. Uh, don't open too much because. Uh, the security relies on the fact that only the application known by the CAS server can authenticate on your CAS server. And there is a web app, web application. It's called the Services Management Web App on the CAS server, which uh, allows you, which enables you, which allows you to define uh, all the URLs of your application with some. Uh, specific features that you can see on the slide, enable, can proxy, SSO, Anonymous, and so on. It's the way to define the application uh, available for your CAS server. So I'm done now with the CAS server. It was one of the big part uh, with the general uh, points. CAS clients are available in many technologies uh, for the CAS server. And it's completely necessary because the CAS clients are integrated in your application. So as your application are developed in many technologies, CAS clients must be available in many technologies. We have uh, the official clients, which are maintained by the community in Java, in .NET, in PHP, for Spring Security, for Shiro Apache, by me. And we have also a mod.cast uh, module for Apache, uh, which is a good way to uh, secure a web application you can uh, modify. 
because you, you just need to put in front of this application an Apache, a reverse proxy, and then you add the mod.cas module and protect your application as if you have uh, a CAS client in your application. These are the official clients, but there are others in various technologies. The CAS protocol is pretty simple, so many people have developed uh, their CAS clients. You have, we have Node.js, Python, Ruby. Here is the URL of, some, of the list of the CA, unofficial CAS clients. We have some uh, from, for Play Framework, Redpack, and Vertex I created. Let's take an example. That's pretty easy. I take an example for the Java uh, CAS client. Uh, in a web application in Java, we have a file web.xml, uh, which defines the main um, filters uh, which apply on the application. And that's pretty simple. With a CAS client, you just need to define two filters. One is to protect the application. Uh, and as you can see, it's the filter on the top of the, of the slide. Uh, and you just define the, the, CAS, the, the CAS login uh, URL and the server name, and the server name is the, the, application, uh, is the application host. So these filters apply on the URL you want, and every time a user wants to access to this URL, the filter will uh, redirect the user to uh, the CAS server if he is not already authenticated. And we have the same, we have the other uh, filter, which is a validation filter, uh, which will receive the Tavis ticket and validate it uh, via the CAS server. So with two filters, with a very simple configuration, you can protect your application. Generally, it's pretty simple uh, to define uh, and implement and integrate a CAS client in an application. And I just took uh, this example uh, uh, for Java, but other examples for PHP, .NET, and others are pretty simple as well. Classified software. Sometimes you can pretty easily classify your uh, software, but it's better if it's out of the box. Many software uh, provides a straightforward integration uh, with the CAS server, where you just have a, a checkbox uh, to click and the URL of your CAS server uh, to, to fill in, and then the, 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 the tool, the web tool, the website becomes uh, available through a CAS authentication. Uh, we have Confluence and Jira from Atlassian, Drupal, LifeRay, UPortal, Outlook, Web Application, JikiWiki, and many others, and I haven't listed all of them. And you have, uh, the, I would say, the fallback solution. If you can classify a uh, website, uh, proprietary software, you can still use uh, the modded CAS uh, Apache module, as I already said, or there is also the Outcast Perl module. This module can be installed on a reverse proxy in front of your uh, application and protect uh, the application. So I think we have made a great tour of, uh, of CAS uh, from all the explanation about all the the, the components and uh, features and flows of a CAS server, of a CAS, of CAS generally, of a CAS server, and of a CAS client. So I'm going to conclude now. Uh, CAS is free, open source, and it's pretty active projects. Generally, it's pretty easy to use CAS, really, compared to other protocols. Uh, the CAS server is a bit more complicated if you're not a Java developer, of course. Uh, but CAS clients are in your technology, to, so it's pretty straightforward. CAS, uh, by design, I would say its architecture, its decentralized architecture, makes it very uh, high performance. And uh, I hope we have cut it, uh, it uh, the right way also, but it, it, it's high performance. It has many features. I didn't enter all in enter 
into all the details. There are many features available and you can integrate it with many tools and protocol. So I would say it's a good choice if you need to, to set up your SSO mechanism. Thank you. If you have uh, any question now, I think I have one more slide. Yes, with uh, you, the URLs uh, to get started, the right one. You have, of course, the URL on uh, Aperio, on GitHub. Uh, you have uh, the old wiki, the new wiki on the GitHub. You have all the information you, you can need uh, with these uh, five URLs. I'm ready for questions. If there are any. If anyone has any questions, feel free to put it into the uh, chat area. It doesn't look like we have any questions. Okay. Uh, uh, what is the difference between CAS and SHIB? Uh, I would say it, it's very different because CAS, CAS is a protocol, is a server, and it's so and Shibboleth on the other side. It's a server, of course, but it's SAML protocol. So it's not uh, it's not the same protocol. You have the same ID because with Shibboleth you need some uh, service provider and the identity provider. So you have a server and you have clients. Let's say uh, it's a very similar architecture, but it's not the same protocol and it's a completely different software. So with CAS, I would say to to be very simple. I would say with CAS, it's easier because really the CAS protocol is uh, uh, really straightforward compared to what you can do with SAML. CAS is powerful, but maybe SAML might be more powerful if you want to uh, do some federation stuff. Does it, uh, does it answer your question? But you can create a bridge between CAS and SHIB if you need. Go ahead, one more, no problem. Okay, the question is, I have 18 institution with 18 different directory server, LDAP or AD, I think, active directory. Can I use CAS to get all of them together for SSO? Uh, yes, yes, yes. In, in fact, uh, if, if you don't have any SSO, you will have uh, all your application linked to uh, one LDAP or one or another uh, authentication mechanism. So it's pretty complicated to to handle properly the security. In fact, it's uh, for each application you have potentially one security breach. With the CAS server, you will uh, you can create as many authentication handler as you want. So as many authentication met methods as you want. So you can say if you want to authenticate. Let's say like uh, like two LDAPs, you can have one authentication handler for the first LDAP and one and another authentication handler for the other LDAP. So in your CAS server, you can have the two authentication mechanisms and you can say which one must apply first. So you can have the two authentication mechanism and you can link all your application to your CAS server, which then will try uh, uh, all the authentication uh, methods to authenticate your users.
So clearly, uh, whatever the number of authentication, authentication mechanism you have, you can use the CAS server and plug in the CAS server all your authentication mechanisms. And only the CAS server will try to validate the credential uh, via all these authentication mechanisms. It will be safer to do things uh, with the CAS server. Seems to be a good response. Any other question? In any case, if you have a question uh, you think about in the future, the CAS mailing list is really the right place uh, to ask it. Thank you, Jerome. That was a really great presentation. I appreciate you taking the time. I'm sure we all do. And so uh, uh, it was very clear. And thanks for offering the opportunity to, uh, you know, to take the questions as well and, and point people to the right place. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Closing the, the session now. Yes, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.